your pal Archie Gamble here, and welcome to another edition of the Gamble Ramble Vlog. For those of you just joining us for the very first time, uh, the Gamble Ramble is the name of my vlog in general, and specifically my vlog channel here on YouTube. And uh, basically I tell stories from my life or and or my 40 year career in music, which some of you may find interesting. And if you are new here, if you before we begin, if you could do me a favor, if you could like below, comment if you like what you see, and most importantly, please subscribe. When I get my subscribers up to the thousand plus level, then I can take this thing to a whole other level. So your appreciation and your help on that would be appreciated. So basically, within the context of the Gamble Ramble, I'd like to do a segment I call the pictures worth a thousand words. And what I do in that generally is I will post a picture on the screen and then I will discuss the circumstances around that picture, how the picture was taken, how, when, why, you know. So when I do these segments, I try to pick a pretty interesting picture to make it something that's worth your time. And uh, I'll insert today's picture here. Yes, that is a picture of a much younger me with Hollywood legend and heartthrob George Clooney. Nephew of the great Rosemary Clooney, by the way, for those of you who didn't know. Anyway, in case you're living under a rock. So this picture was taken in Chicago, Illinois in September, very early September, uh, 1997. I believe it was the first week in September. And I will explain how the picture came to be and the circumstances surrounding it, surrounding it rather. So first of all, I'm not sure if the picture I posted is just George and I, or, uh, or if, if, I, if I've edited out my good friend, Steve Georgiakopoulos. He was in the photo as well. And uh, I'll try and find both. I know I have both. But, um, apologies, Steve, if, this, if I can only find the picture of me with George. So I'll explain how this happened with, as I said, my friend George, Steve George Coppolis, the George Coppolis brothers, Steve and his brother Dean, and I had taken a road trip from our home near London, Ontario, where I'm filming from today, in Old South, Wortley Village. And uh, we had taken a road trip from London and drove to Los Angeles and back. So it was kind of circuitous, circuitous, a little bit, I get too early in the morning to speak, circuitous route. The way we did it was, on the way, we stopped in Ohio, uh, Nashville, Memphis, and uh, where did we go from there? We went through Texas, and, Jeez, I can't even remember all the places, but we made a point of hitting these cities for a day or two at a time and going to Sun Studios and uh, in Memphis and, uh, you know, going to Music Row in Nashville and uh, we're out for a few drinks in Ohio. I think we stopped in Cleveland overnight. Hello, Cleveland. And, um, and then accordingly, we did the reverse on the way back. We stopped in uh, Los Angeles, stopped in Vegas, we went to, uh, Denver, Colorado, we went to um, St. Louis, Missouri, and there's a few places that we went to. So uh, basically, I can't recall them all if I'm honest, but it was a great trip and all in all, it took us about three weeks. We had some, we all had a time of time, a chunk of time off. And I should explain that Steve and Dean are brothers, very good friends of mine. And the three of us played together in a Kiss tribute band called Alive. I'll insert a picture here. Some of you may know me from back in the day. Alive was a great experience. At the time that they existed, late 80s, early 90s, they were the penultimate Kiss tribute in the world, recognized as such by Kiss. And they started when it was, you know, you couldn't buy costumes that were made by uh, the same people that make Kiss costumes. You had to have this stuff made by hand and you had to hunt down the authentic guitars. They were incredibly, incredibly accurate in their, in the details of their show. It was a real pleasure to play for them. So in the process of playing with them, Steve and Dean and I in particular became very good friends. And this road trip was, came at a time when uh, we all had a chunk of time off. 
Yeah, I was probably in between bands or was able to take a couple weeks off from my band at the time and just go. Something we'd always wanted to do was travel, drive through basically the United States. And it was an incredible experience. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a vlog about that trip. But I digress. As I tend to do, sometimes I digress when I'm with you. Anyway, um, so let's focus on the on the trip itself. As I said, the end game, the end result of the first section of the trip was getting to Los Angeles, spending a week in Los Angeles. So essentially, it was like we took a week to get there, stopping and stops on the way. Spent a week or more in Los Angeles, and then. On the other side, spent a week driving home and stopping at various points of interest. So, um, this takes place actually on the way home. And of our last stop, which was the city of Chicago, the great city, the great city, great city, great city of Chicago, Illinois, um, which was our last stop. And then from there, we stopped over at a hotel, went out for a few drinks. And then the next morning, drove straight from Chicago to London, with a distance of about six, seven hours, I think. So, lots of exciting stuff happened on this trip. As a matter of fact, during our stay in Los Angeles, we got to go to uh, George Clooney's house, which was pretty cool. There's another Hollywood uh, aside to this story. He wasn't home. As a matter of fact, he was filming the movie Meet Joe Black in uh, Rhode Island at the time. But a friend of ours who we had met when touring with Kiss in 95, she worked for Kiss. She also worked for Brad Pitt. I did his hair and makeup, and uh, when he was away filming on location, she would take care of his home and his, uh, his dogs. He had five Irish wolfhounds, huge dogs, feed them and take care of them. And for insurance purposes, someone had to occupy the house. So she and another young lady took 12-hour shifts. I'm sure it wasn't hard work for them sleeping in Brad Pitt's home. So uh, I'll do that again. I'll, I'll, I'll revisit that uh, on another day, a vlog uh, in the future. And rather than start from the beginning, I'm just gonna resume from here, shall we? So, uh, as I said, yeah, we were, um, a friend worked for, for both Kiss and Brad Pitt. And uh, when we were out visiting her in Los Angeles, she invited us to come to Brad's home and check it out. And we did that, it was really cool. I'll, I'll, I'll do another vlog about that another day. Um, as I said, he wasn't home, we didn't meet him, but we got to hang out in his house and see some pretty cool stuff. He takes a souvenir from every movie set that he's on. He had a chandelier in his home that was from the set of Interview with the Vampire. Another time, another vlog. So anyway, it was a fantastic trip all around. Uh, three weeks out of my life, I was young, still young, and uh, I'm not yet 30, and having a great time, and uh, just with two of my best friends traveling through America, and just laughing, having fun. It was a great trip. So as I said, on the, on the way home, the very last stop, last city we stopped in was uh, Chicago, Illinois. And we got a hotel, checked in. And I said, you know what, the last night of our tour, so to speak, why don't we go out and get a beer? So being young, single uh, guys that we were, we decided that we needed a little culture in our lives and uh, decided to go to the ballet, a strip club. Now, I can't for the life of, me, life of me remember the name of this club, but it was big, and there was a lot of beautiful women there. And uh, we went, just to, you know, a couple hours to get one again early night. We were doing the final drive home the next day, five or six hours, as I said, back to London. And um, I didn't you know, get buggered up or anything, but just had a few drinks. And it was pretty fun. So we were sitting around at this club, and this club is packed, right? And I honestly can't remember what day of the week it was. But, uh, we're sitting around having a few beers, three of us are at a table. And you know, if you've been to one of those places, you know what it's like. Um, uh, there was uh, constantly girls coming over and wanted to, you know, buy them drinks and get lap dances and stuff. And we're good boys, we just had beer, you know, lap dances. Huh? So we're sitting there at our table and over to what would be your left, my right. I see a big commotion. A bunch of people gathered around in kind of a circle. I was sitting there, kind of checking it out in my peripheral vision, not really paying attention. And Dean Georgiakopoulos, oh my love, hi Dean if you're watching this, he's kind of squinting, looking over and goes, that looks like Batman. Now I'm not a big um, 
action movie buff. I don't watch those kind of movies, generally speaking, and stuff. So, um, DC or Marvel movies or anything like that. Um, so I wasn't, yeah, I just kind of disregarded the references, the reference rather, and I just kind of continue back to focus on my beer and the lovely talent surrounding me. And then Dean goes, it is Batman. And I'm like, well, dude, that's fucking George Clooney over there. And I look over and the, the circle had parted a little bit just enough to see George Clooney himself. Sitting in a chair, absolutely surrounded by strippers. One on his lap, if I believe so, if I, if I remember correctly. But he's got a girl sitting in his lap, uh, might have even been two. And he was single at the time. So, um, it's like, holy fuck, you know? I might not be a fan of, of those kinds of movies, but I certainly am a fan of George Clooney and I certainly know who he is and admire his work. But it's pretty cool to see him. And uh, I, I, I can't remember the specifics, but I think we probably asked the waitress. It was standard reason we asked the waitress. So, you know, what's, that's George Clooney, and if so, what's he doing here? And she said, oh yeah, he's, um, he was a former member of the, of the cast of the show. I believe it was ER, hospital-based drama, that was filmed in Chicago. And he had left to go on to pursue, you know, major movie stardom. And the, the last episode of ER was filmed, if you remember, if you're old enough to remember, was filmed live. Uh, live action, live in, in real time. So he'd come back to film the last episode in Chicago with his cast members, and they wrapped up shooting, and they were having a post-wrap party. So as we realized as time went on that the, the uh, actor Anthony Edwards was also with him, who was a part of the cast of that show, and also uh, Joe Pantoliano, the great Ralphie from, uh, I forget about it, Ralphie from The Sopranos, right? So it was pretty cool, uh, like, okay, well, I thought, Good stuff, right? You know, Clooney's cool, I like him. They gotta bother the guy. He's obviously swimming in beautiful women. And uh, so this was about, well, it was within two weeks after Princess Diana had been killed in the motors, that terrible motors, or, uh, car accident in, uh, in France, in Paris. And I remember correctly that, that Clooney was the first, if not the first, one of the first, celebrities to come forward and put the blame squarely on the shoulders of the paparazzi, as he should have, because they did kill her, you know, with their, with their unnecessary bullshit. I digress. So I, I admired him for that, because he was, he was always seemed to be very, um, at the time especially, plain-spoken, approachable kind of guy. And actually, if I can digress for a second, I would like to tell a story about Clooney that I know is true. I read about this at Esquire. And I heard about it from other sources as well. Um, this is the kind of guy that this guy is, okay? Now, he, of course, grew up with his aunt, the late Rosemary Clooney, as a huge Hollywood uh, singing star and actress. And so I'm sure that he had a bit of a leg up, but at the same time, he did what a lot of starving young actors and musicians do in Hollywood, slept on people's couches and bum meals. And If you remember Clooney, he had walk-on parts and... Uh, cameos and stuff in, in a lot of series in the, in the 80s and 90s. I can't remember specifics, but hey, I'm not Wikipedia or Google. You can check for yourself, but you know what I'm talking about, especially if you're my age. He, he was on like, I won't say specifically Facts of Life, but shows like that or Family Ties or whatever it might be, right? He would have bit parts. And um, so during his time up, coming up, he had a lot of help from a lot of a lot of friends. And the story I read about Esquire, I'll encapsulate it and give you the short form version. He had a dinner party one night for, I believe it was 14 friends. He had a big giant table set, 14 place settings, and he had wait staff, butlers, maids, and everything in, in place. So they ate this meal, a good good wine and champagne and everything. And the, for the dessert course, a team of tuxedo waiters brought out these, um, I think they were Gucci bags, I put one in front of each person at the table, all 14 people. Uh, people opened them up and there was a million dollars cash in each bag. And he basically gave a little speech where he said, you know, um, I wouldn't be here where I am without the help of all of you. And you've all uh, been specifically invited for a specific reason that somewhere along the line of my career, you helped me out and I want to repay you so what he had done was he had paid the taxes on this 
$14 million so that each person would pocket $1 million. He also put aside the money so that they, um, they pay, he paid the tax on so that they would get the full amount, which I thought was an incredible thing for him to do. As a matter of fact, I remember hearing that one guy who was uh, some type of very successful businessman with the table said, you know, I don't need this. And George said, well then don't donate to charity, whatever you want to do with it, it's yours. So anyway, I've always liked the Kloonster. He's always seemed like uh, he's got his head screwed on straight, you know, pretty down to earth guy. So uh, we continued on with the night. There was a pretty big buzz in there with them, these three, three actors there, the, especially Clooney, you know. And at one point I got to go to the bathroom and literally I turned a corner and I, I almost ran smack dab into him. Uh, I said, hey, you know, you're George Clooney, huh? Duh, which obviously you're the million times a day. I was pretty drunk, and I was probably a little tip, tipsy myself. And, um, I said, yeah, I said, hey, you know, it's really nice to meet you. I really admire your, your, your acting, you know. I said, oh, thank you very much. And I remember I said to him, I said, listen, I have to tell you, I really admire the, the public stance that you took against the paparazzi after, last week after Princess Diana was killed. I said, you know, I can't even imagine what that must be like. They're horrible, you know. And he, I remember exactly what he said to me. He goes, yeah, they're vampires. He said, they're vampires. It's, you know. Uh, that was just a, basically a quick conversation about, you know, the price of fame. He said, you know, he goes, I know what I signed up for. And, but, you know, these people are going through your garbage and, you know, uh, waiting for you when you're taking your dog for a crap at three in the morning or, you know, just a necessary intrusion into your life, so, into your life. And I said, yeah, anyway, I talked to him a little bit about it, shook his hand. And I said, yeah, man, I really admire you for that, you know. Uh, and I said, yeah, nice to meet you and went on his way. We went on our way. So then, uh, fast forward a little bit, get a little later in the evening, and uh, we've been there for a couple hours. I said, you know, let's get back to the hotel, get some sleep. We've got to drive back to Canada tomorrow. Um, the adventure ends. So we're out front, and uh, valet parking brings the car out. And uh, I forget that Anthony Edwards guy was an uh, actor. I didn't recognize him, but I didn't see couldn't tell you what he was in, but I knew that he, he was there because he was filming that ER. We asked him, said, hey, do you mind if we, the three of us, do you mind if we get a picture with you? And he totally shined us off, like just, and walked. And we just started laughing, like, okay, whatever, buddy. Didn't want to meet you that bad anyway. And then Joe Pantoliano came up. Hey, yes, said, yeah, Joe, you can't get a picture with you. If I can find it, I'll put it in here. And he was okay, like he wasn't, you know, overtly, um, Charming or gracious, but I'm sure he just wanted to get into his cab, get back to his hotel. They wanted to be bothered by some hosers. But he was accommodating, we took a picture. And then Clooney came out. And then uh, George, uh, Steve George Cop, Dean George Coppola, sorry, had gone to the car and gotten his camera uh, in the trim. And I walked back up with him and he nodded at me because he acknowledged me that we'd been talking, right? And I said, hey, uh, you know, George, I'm really sorry to bother you again. But I kick myself if I do this. Would you mind if we got a picture with you? And he goes, yeah, man, no problem. And he was fucking hammered at this point. But, you know, um, happy drunk, you know, people that get, like, you can see they're drunk, but they're smiling and everything's cool. He was like that, right? So Steve and I, I, I think Dean took the picture or Dean was, was away from us. For some reason, Dean's not in the picture. I seem to think that it was, I said, Dean, get the picture, I'll get, one of the bouncers to take it. Dean's like, no, it's okay. Or Dean was away, I honestly can't recall. But we took a shot, and I, I inserted it again. And you can see pretty clearly that George Clooney's pretty drunk, right? I mean, look at his eyes. But he couldn't have been nicer, you know, with a real, real nice guy. So uh, yeah, we got a picture, and it was a nice way to cap off our three, three week American holiday. And uh, next day we drove back to Canada and had quite the tale to tell. So there's my story. It's not exactly earth-shattering news. It's not life-changing, but it is fun. And it's fun, something in life that we have, uh, we need a surplus of. So I hope you're enjoying it. And as I said, if you could do me a small favor of liking this and commenting below, and more importantly, please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, just remember, she walks by moonlight.